I wanted to do the nine absolutes of a successful hitter and I wanted to share with you that today. So we're gonna just get right into it, enough talking. Before we go into the video, I wanna say please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button. We're coming out with videos daily to help you be a better baseball player. My name is Jermaine Curtis. I've played professionally for 10 years. I've also played in the major leagues and I've played at the top D1 college in the nation or one of them at least, UCLA. Subscribe to the channel because we got some good content coming for you, okay? So let's get right into the video. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about the nine absolutes of a successful hitter. Number nine, all successful hitters I know have a plan. Before going up to the plate, they have a plan on what they're looking for, what they're trying to do, what pitchers they're trying to hit. They're not going up to the plate unprepared. They're, they have a plan. And then when you get in the batter's box, it's time to execute. So having a plan, even for young hitters, okay? Young hitters might be looking for a good pitch to hit. Um, and, you know, you, that's it. You're swinging at strikes. And if you're swinging at strikes in the zone, you're going to start, you're going to be more successful. So having a plan, no matter at what age, what is your plan? It's just not go up there and swing the bat and then going to get a hit like it doesn't happen like that i mean the odds are you'll get some hits but if you want to be successful if you want to be a great hitter you have a plan what you're trying to do up there um and knowing your strengths and weaknesses on what pitches you like and then playing to that so your plan might be if you're a good low ball hitter you look for a pitch that is low and then you, you know, that's that's your plan. Your plan is to look for that pitch, okay? So number nine would be plan. Number eight would be dealing with failure. Um, there are so many young hitters that are good, but they can't deal with setbacks. They can't deal with failure. Um, and if you're trying to be successful in this game, you need to look past the failures because that's what this game is it's all about who can deal with failures the best who could deal with the pressure who could deal with setbacks if you can deal with the pressure and you deal with the failure of this game of being a hitter you're going to be successful in it so you know how they say turn that frown upside down and many hitters that i've seen and including myself don't even acknowledge the failures and look past and look forward to that next at bat you're going to get out you're not going to be perfect and i know you want to be perfect but you're not so you can't put that much pressure on yourself if you put yourself in a square like that you're not going to get the results that you want seven the sets of hitters i've seen in my career they work hard i mean how else are you going to separate yourself? You can't just do the bare minimum and then expect to be great or a successful hitter. No, you need to work for it. And that's what they do. They're working in the cage. They're perfecting their craft. So I don't think I need to say much about that. Six, confident. And when I think of confidence, I think of Jose Altuve. Jose Altuve, I think he's about five, four, um, if he's that, but in the, on the baseball field, he's bigger than Judge. He's nine feet tall. He believes in himself. He believes there is no body playing on the field. I remember stories of, of playing against him and and guys that have played against him. They said that when he looks out in the field, he just feel, sees empty space. He just believes he's going to get hit all the time. And it shows. So you have to have a confidence and belief in yourself. So many people said that Jose Altuve couldn't do it. And look where he's at right now. He's proving them wrong because he believed in himself. Five, they control the zone. They're not swinging at, you know, this garbage out here or this garbage here. They're controlling the zone. They're making the pitcher throw in the zone, in the strike zone where they want the ball. They're not swinging at bad pitches or tough pitches unless it's two strikes and they're trying to just get another pitch. But they're making the pitcher throw inside that zone. They're not swinging on the corners here. As you can see, the 17 inches right here, 
they're not swinging at these pitchers because these pitchers don't amount to anything. No, no hits in these. They're making them throw inside the strike zone. So if you control the zone, you're going to get better pitches to hit, which is going to allow you to be more successful. Most of the time when I'm going bad, um, when it comes to hitting, I'm swinging outside the zone. Balls that are look like they're good pitches and I'm swinging at them. Then I look on video and it's like they're they're up in the zone or they're off the plate. I'm like not dialing the pitcher into the zone so that I can get better pitches so I can be more successful. So controlling the zone, that's a huge one. Four, they let the ball get deeper. And what I mean is this is the ball that they're hitting. Okay, just say uh, you, you're swinging and you're going and hitting this ball right here. Okay, well, if you're swinging at this pitch out here, then you have to make quick decisions. You have to go out and get this pitch. Well, they're letting the ball come to them, this ball right here. So that means if that's a slider or a curveball and it, you know, it doesn't. It's not in the zone or it, it goes below the zone. They can say, no, I don't want to swing at that and stop their swing. This makes the pitcher throw the ball in the zone more. Okay. Because since you're letting the ball get deeper, you're making better decisions. Okay. Keep it going. They're early and ready to hit. Being early is great because then again, you can make great decisions and being ready to hit. Like... If you're late, everything breaks apart. Your whole body breaks, your swing, everything breaks apart. Um, it breaks down. But if you're early and ready to hit, you can be direct to the ball and uh, you know make great decisions. You see the ball longer and see it in slower. When you're late, everything speeds up on you, okay? Two, top hand. Top hand's very important when it comes to the swing. If your top hand's not working when you're swinging, um, then you're not going to be direct to the ball. So your top hand needs to be direct to the baseball. And most successful hitters, I mean, if not all, they're direct to the ball. I mean, you're not going to take a weird swing and then hit the ball out. That just doesn't happen. They're direct with the barrel straight to the ball. They're not pushing the barrel they're direct with they're controlling the barrel because the barrel is like almost like a hammer if you had a hammer in your hand you wouldn't like take a weird swing to the ball you would you would take the big head of it with the big head of the hammer and and you know and you would nail you would hammer a nail same thing balls there barrel and you're taking it straight to the ball you're hammering it um, that's why they have that term. Oh, he hammered that baseball because he's taking the barrel to the ball. And he hammers it, okay? And number one, strong base. Um, what's the goal of the pitcher? The pitcher's goal is to break your base, or in other words, keep you off balance. And if you have a strong base, then they can't break your base. They can't get you off balance. Then that allows you to make better decisions at the plate because you can spit on pitches, you're ready to hit, you're seeing the ball, and that's, again, that's number one. So these are by no means in order, but I wanted to give you nine absolutes of a successful hitter. Um, I hope that you appreciate this video and you like it. Uh, comment below if you want to see something. If you're having some trouble, I would love to, you know, make a video to help you out. Uh, subscribe to the channel and thank you for your time.